Probably should have filled me up. Three, one, two, three. Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, Jason Outlaw, music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, from Stitch Factory, Jen Toller. From Cirque du Soleil, Olma Derrix. Musical guest, Rassar, along with Cameron Calloway. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who's also known on the street as Hot Sauce, Mr. Jason Outlaw. Get up for DJ Lenny Alfonso, yeah, huh? Right, Let's hear right for on, him. Right on. Yes. Thank you. Yes. How you doing, Lenny? Today is a good day, sir. Today is a good day. All right. Now, obviously, not not too too good of a day for the uh, for uh, Ice Cube, the guy who sang "Today's a Good Day." You guys know that guy? Oh, yeah. what happened? Yeah. The, well, his movie didn't get nominated for the Oscars. You guys hear about that? Yeah, yeah. it sucks. Yeah. Yes, I know. So, but that's all right. He didn't have to use his AK, so that's all that matters. Right? <laughs> all right, all right, guys. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for being here. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. We appreciate you being here. All right. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what's in the news. That's right. We've got all this talk about Powerball. So the previous Powerball winner, we looked her up. Uh, she won 188 million dollars, and she gave 21 million dollars in bail money to her boyfriend that goes by the street name of Hot Sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said he got the name Hot Sauce in prison because gonorrhea burns like hell. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, Verizon. Verizon. Uh, there was a college student that got a new cell phone from Verizon, and it turns out that it was Sir Mix-a-Lot's old number. That's right. And now he gets uh, raunchy texts. He's asking anyone who is thinking of sending dirty texts to instead dial 1-900 Mix-A-Lot and kick them nasty thoughts. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> he said, but he did say that, that he thought the photos were very sexy. They're so sexy, even white boys have to shout. That's right. <laughs> There's so, there's so many of these, actually. Um, DJ Lenny over here came up with, the, with one a tagline to this as well. Go ahead, Lenny. Yeah, he said he didn't, he didn't see any of their faces, but... Uh, he could confirm they had an Oakland booty. Ah, that's true. LA face with an Oakland booty. I like it. I like it. Um, all right. Hey, in Chino, California, several hundred people came out to applaud the lotto winner that purchased his ticket at a 7 Eleven store in Chino. The crowd had mixed emotions, though, whether to applaud the man or mug him. <laughs> what do you do? What do you, I would have mugged him. Ah! Yeah, guy with the beard? Yeah, I yeah you would have mugged him. Yeah, all right. He's got a backward hat on. He'd do it, yeah. I don't know what that means. I have no idea. Um, the NFL has approved the uh, St. Louis Rams to move back to L.A. That's right. However, the Rams will continue to suck. Got him. <laughs> That's right. He will. He will. The Rams are just, uh, I mean, they were good for like, you know, two seasons, I think. Um, a large baby has been born. This baby is 12 pounds, 8 ounces, and is 2 feet tall. Yeah, that's right. The husband uh, has actually filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable broken vagina. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Was that an awe? Did I get an awe for that? Really? Is that what? I get so, oh, my off. goodness. Yeah. Why did I get an awe for that? I like the irreconcilable vagina. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Donald Trump is once again in the news. Surprise. Yeah. Um, he is ripping on the person who hooked up his faulty mic for his campaign rally on Wednesday calling the person a SOB, but he actually said it. That's right. You've called me worse, said the Hispanic worker. <laughs> yes. True story. Yes, true story. Um, <laughs> South Carolina Republican Governor Nikki Haley uh, gave the rebuttal to Obama's State of the Union address. That's right. The Republicans chose her because A, she's a woman, and B, she's the daughter of immigrant parents. However, after her terrible robot-like response, she has been deported. That's true. That's Shoot that. Right. She's, 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 did you guys see that? Anyone see it? No? No? This is a rough one tonight, man. Boy. These are going over like a fart in a spacesuit. It's good. It's all right. Um, the average age of mothers 
has reached an all-time high. That's right, the average age of first-time mothers. It's now 26 years old, which does not bode well for MTV's 10 and pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep going younger and younger and younger. It's true. It's true. Uh, Nick Carter, you guys may know him from the Backstreet Boys. That's right. He was arrested in Florida for punching a bouncer. That's right. He said he learned a few things while he was in jail, like the fact that he has a pretty mouth. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys, we've got a wonderful show for you guys. Give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso. <laughs> has become quite a staple here in downtown Las Vegas with the Stitch Factory. How about a big round of applause for Jen Taller? There you go. Have a seat. Have a seat. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> good. Like if I don't fall I, off this chair. I like your outfit. It's it's very uh, it's it's very uh, what's 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 the movie that's on? Heart Eight. Uh, what is it? Is it Heart Eight? A Heart Eight. <laughs> The hateful eight. It's oh, very there hateful you go. Eight. Yes, it's very hateful eight with the hat and stuff like that. You know, yeah, I knew there was like a fashion person coming on today, so I did my best like dress up like fashion. Uh, but I think I kind of failed. I look like like Mr. Rogers' cousin who like wasn't allowed to be in the neighborhood with the kids. Okay, so you're a you're a uh, Texas Tech, right? Mm -hmm. You're a Texas Tech, and it's and yeah. you said it's the what? The Red Raiders. Red Red Raiders, yeah. not the Red Riders. No. Red Raiders. Yes. All right, that, that that's cool. So what what exactly brought you here to Vegas from from Texas? Um, actually, Zappos.com. So I moved out here in 2009 to work for that amazing business. Oh, yeah. and, and then you were like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something myself, right? Yeah, I like, you know, disappeared to Aussie for a year and then came back to um, help uh, Megan Moser uh, open Stitch Factory, which is in downtown Las Vegas. Nice. Yeah. That is awesome. That's awesome. And actually, I want to bring up one thing that, that I, I didn't say anything about. But earlier when I was talking to you, I said, I said oh, so, so, so you work with Stitch Factory. I was like, I was like you're one of like, you know, the big people over there. And she said, she said no, I, just, just say I work with Stitch Factory because we're all one working together. Isn't that cool? I think that's, I think that's an awesome way to kind of look at things. Yeah. Gosh, if I had some someone working for here. me, I'd be like, I'm your boss. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm your I boss. mean, that happens behind closed doors. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> behind closed doors, she's like, ah, ah. Um, and I, actually, it's kind of interesting that I, I saw a news article recently that said that the Stitch Factory closed. I think it said Stitch Factory disappear. Disapp disappear. Dis I don't even think it was disappeared. It was just disappear. Is it David Copperfield? Yeah. He was like, I don't know. Disappear. It was like, you know, we were practicing magic that day. So I don't know if like it worked and maybe it just vanished and then reappeared before they could. So they just thought know, it was closed? Google and see that our website was active, called, so, you know, we were opening. And, yeah, anything like you know, that. Check emails, your facts, right? walking in the door, you know, one of those things. So, yeah, um, it was kind of an interesting morning getting phone calls like, hey, what's going on? We're hearing this. And we're like, I don't, I actually have no idea. And uh, it's a little disappointing because there's relationships there. It was a quick text to fact check it, you know, and it was with a local um, radio station that a lot of us really listen to and, val and use for validation. And it's credible. And it just, it's disappointing that maybe that's not happening, was especially when it's so easy to fact check. Was the radio station Delilah? No, right. she's Delilah, too good. Yeah. This song's yes. for you. She always makes you feel so good. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I listen to the line and just hug a pillow and cry. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, maybe she doesn't feel you, make you feel that good. She <laughs> yeah, doesn't make you feel good. She's got a song for everyone, guys. Yeah. I'm saying, you, you, you need a song, you call Delilah. Yep. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. That's, that's, that's crazy. So, so, uh, so how, how do you like my outfit? Do you like my outfit? You know, it looks really good. Like the bow tie uh -huh. with the cardigan. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now now tell me what's going on with the Stitch Factory mm -hmm. right now. What, what are you guys yeah, doing Yeah, so, you know, we've gone through a transition period as any startup in a small business and just focusing on what's working and really direct that, you know, energy and everything towards that. And we're really excited. We're really focusing on brand development. So we work with a lot of different companies, locally and non-locally, to help understand their business and what they're trying to do. And then the consumers that are coming into their business are reacting to their business and put together artwork with product to really build a brand. Oh. So um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Life is Beautiful. It's an amazing music festival that happens Yeah, we kind of know them down here, don't yeah. we? Yeah, just a little bit. So um, we actually did all the merchandise last year. And so now getting ramped up 
for 2016 and working on the artwork right now and what that collection looks like for the full year and then during the festival as well. Oh, wow. That's yeah. uh, that's quite a big account for you guys. Mm -hmm. this, huh? So, so, so if, if I was to design clothes, which obviously I will not, <laughs> but um, if I was to design clothes mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, let's say I was just like a startup and I was like, man, I just don't know where to go. I just know I got a cool t-shirt that I think I can. So I just come to you guys and you guys help me brand it Absolutely. and then get it out in the public mm -hmm. eye. Yeah. So we would just kind of want to really understand what you're trying to do, what's your mission and where you're trying to go and who your consumers are. And then through the database of information and knowledge that we all have would then help curate that product for you. So it fits you and then is successful to your consumers that they want to buy it and wear it and never take it off. Wow, you use a lot of big words, consumers. Well, what? I mean, what? I think I said it a few times, so you know, maybe it's my only big word. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> like, to the consumers. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So so, so how, how into fashion are you? Have you been in fashion your whole life? Um, I have. I've been... I was like, my aunt used to make patterns and sew stuff when we were growing up. She made my dress when I was like in first grade. It's a red dress. It was amazing, and I don't know what happened to it. And it doesn't matter. I don't fit in it. But if you obviously. had it, you would yeah, wear it. Yeah, I try to like get in there. Um, so I've always been around it. And then I went to college for fashion design, and then just really early on got into buying and then designing and stuff like that. So. Oh wow, that's a, that's that's a pretty cool. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have an older sister and a younger sister. Uh, and did you, did you dress tail. them up? Is that what that was? They No, but they definitely take my clothes oh, they <laughs> and take pass clothes. it around. And They're like, oh, I love this hateful eight yeah. hat. <laughs> yes. <Okay>. yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, well, on the screen here, mm -hmm. we're going to look at this screen, and uh, we've got some celebrities, so we're going to say who or what might this celebrity be wearing. Okay, Who or so, what? so, yeah, so, so, so here it is. So let's go with our first slide. Ooh. Okay, so do, do we all see this? It's pretty awesome. And here's the deal if you get it wrong, you got to take a shot. So, who's the judge, though? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I am. <laughs> I'm the judge. No, actually, let's let them be the judge. You guys want to be the judge? Yes, okay, we're gonna let them be the judge. Okay, okay. cool. So, yeah. here we go. So, what, who or what um, could, is this dress? You know, it's a mixture of like a pinata. And maybe a little bit of Big Bird and It that had a color hair job. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> of rainbows. Mm -hmm. So, 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 you, so you're gonna say, you're gonna say if you were to guess one of them, what would they be? I mean, it's a good mixture. I it's mean, a good mixture. That's what you okay, do. so, so you we're gonna go with a mixture. Is that yeah. what you, okay? She, she's gonna say a mixture. Let's see if that's correct. It is a feather duster. Oh, okay. That's, well, that's what it is. Okay, that's a fe that is definitely a feather yeah, duster. Can you go back not? to that slide? Can you go back one? That's I a mean, feather duster. If I've ever seen one. I, you know, I see it now. Yeah, my mom used to use those a lot. That's awesome. Okay, so that do shot I, right there is yours. There you go. Do I take it out of the straw? It, you can. I would just shoot it. I'll take one with you. That was a really bad idea. Yeah, don't drink them out of the straw. Yeah. Do, oh. I, have, do I have to finish? Take all care. Of these? Oh, the, oh, this is bad. Yeah, the, there's there's 20 more after oh, backstage. Gosh. Come on, chug, 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 chug. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's tequila. Which is, is that tequila? I mean, yeah. I like tequila. I kind of felt I tequila. The lime and, I felt tequila. I was like, you know, that's some tequila. Salt would like, be great. not so much here, but more here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right cool. Here. All right. Let's <laughs> let's jump to the second one. Okay. So, um, <laughs> who, Rihanna. Who or what could this be? Well, it's Rihanna. It is um, Rihanna. Okay. <laughs> The dress you know, I'd be. like to think that my good friend Kristen Colbert probably helped put this together. She's really great, and this, these are some of her colors and style. So is I think it, here? she is. She's in the stage. Kristen, hey, what's up, Kristen? You got a hateful eight hat on too. Yes. That's so cool. You guys are like in a gang. That's so awesome. I feel like if, uh, if we went to Kristen's house and she were to have curtains on her windows, which she does not right now, these would be there. She'd take them down and then knit up or stitch up a shawl of you're, fur. You're in fashion and you don't have curtains? What? Well, she's like, <gasps> I need a boyfriend to come. Oh, you need a boyfriend to come. Uh, Joey's or available. Joey, our camera guy here, is available. <laughs> I believe. That's, that's actually why we're here, getting Kristen a boyfriend. Hey, uh, we're, we're all about making love connections here. We've got this going. Uh, all right, so if you were to guess, other than her curtains, what would it be? Um, she had a good answer for you, I think. Yeah, sorry. Well, I actually don't know. A pizza. A pizza. She's going to say a pizza. Let's see. Is it, oh, oh, you're correct. Wait. Did you watch some... <laughs> She's going to make pizza curtains. All right, I'll Gosh. take a shot for okay. that. Do I need to do that mm -hmm. again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though you got it right. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I, what do you, I think, I think whether we get them wrong or right, we should take a shot, right? Yeah. It's, it's it, whose birthday? It's, oh, it's your birthday? That's awesome. Yeah. We're going to haze you later. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, all right, <laughs> next slide. I mean, I'm nervous for myself. Is this Rihanna again? <laughs> it is Rihanna. She's got some weird dresses. All right, good. So <laughs> what do you think it could be? I, you know, I think it's a lampshade 
or the top of something that I probably shouldn't say and or a jellyfish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the top I like of something. I like that answer. Let's go with that. The top of something she couldn't, she cannot say. No, it's, it's the princess from Super Mario's. Jillian, yes. I did not hear you helping me on that one. <laughs> yes, yes. Jillian's not. Okay, let's, let's, I think we need to take another shot okay. for that. All right. And uh, let's go to the next one. I'm so glad I stopped drinking before I came here. Mm. <laughs> That's so smooth. Oh I think and she's FYI, <laughs> I don't drink at all. And here I am. Uh, what? I'm... <laughs> My voice just cracked. That's how tough I'm ha how hard of a time I'm having. I'm flaming. Who's the guy? Is it on Hercules? That he's like, and like oh, the Hercules. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. That's the guy from Hercules. Hercules. Like, Hercules. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Hades. All right. What is it? It is. Oh no, um, the guy from. Yeah, the guy from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yeah, I don't. Think Heat Miser. That's his name. Heat Miser. That's right. Akil knew that, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. Okay, I think I'm, we need to take another shot for that. You know, not good yeah. at this game. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of which, do you have a boyfriend? Because she's gonna be drunk tonight. He might be in the crowd. He might be in the crowd. He is might it, be where? in the crowd. Is he out there? Oh, can, that guy yeah, there? Right the, there, waving his hand. Where is he? I don't see him. Waving his hand. There he is. What's up, guy? She's she's gonna be great tonight. Game on. Okay. Next up. Next up. Do, do we have one more? Oh, I, there's a... I think we've got one more. Right? Yes, we got one more. Okay. Um, uh, who or what does his hair look like? Does his face look like? Just I said you. A dog that got a perm. Oh, a dog that got a perm. Let's see next. Uh -huh, Ooh, Top that, Ramen. That's a good one, Top actually. Ramen, that's what yeah. it looks like. One more shot for us. We'll cheers uh -huh. to this one. Cheers. All right. Well, thank you for having me here, thanks. Hey, thanks for being here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure you check out stitchfactory.com. That is where it's at, and that's where you can get all the correct information on what's going on with the Stitch Factory. <laughs> Give it up for Jen Taller. Woo! Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back. After a great conversation about bearded women, we now have our next guest, who has worked in a range of internationally acclaimed franchises, including Star Trek, Entertainment Tonight, Dilbert, and Peanuts. And today, we're going to talk to her about the history of our own Cirque du Soleil. Come on out. Yeah. Alma. Yeah. The beer, beer. Yeah. What happened? Is that you're bringing us? I don't know. So you know, um, when we first had the opportunity to book you for the show, I had no idea how amazing the story was of Cirque and how it got here. So let's fill in the audience on that story. Well, one of the things we talked about was the idea of. Um, of entrepreneurship, and so you, you know, I know you thought you were talking to Cirque du Soleil, this sort of thing. There is nothing more entrepreneurial than than Cirque underneath the hood. Ultimately, how do you build a brand that makes people like do this when they say the name? It's like you're throwing magic on me or something. Thing, you know, it started with a fire breather with a hat on a street. I mean, a street performer was really how Cirque came to be. The number one be. employee at Cirque was a a fire, fire breathing, breathing, and this is this is employee number two. Is and it number two? Who's yes, this? this is employee number two. What number are you? Oh, goodness, number 4,000, 4, 4,000 something now. Yeah, yeah, way, okay, way okay. down the line, out so of the line. You know, it's, it's just a nutty idea, the, the, the idea that, um, you know, our, our founder, Gila Liberté, said he wanted to reinvent the circus and, and dared to do it without animals. You know, it's funny listening to some of the things you're talking about with bearded ladies and lion tamers, and it was not about that. It was about this <laughs> kind of vision and music and has become the thing that Cirque is today, so. So what was it back at this time? I mean, obviously it was all about stilts, but was there more to it at that time? Or? No, I mean, in the, in the very early days, it was, it was all street-based things, and then eventually became, if you go to the next slide, I think that's the best look yeah. at, if you've ever seen the shows here on the Strip, you know, giant theaters, um, but the early, yeah, early days, cool. that's what... This is the original stage, yeah, before and, you guys had Bellagio and MGM yeah, and all the and big we, stages. And, and we still tour in tents, so when our shows go on tour, oh, okay, not yeah. the ones here in the city, but our, you know, the other part of our company right, where them. they... I saw it at South by Southwest and a few exactly. things, so they're still kind of on tour. It takes 86 tractor trailer trucks yes, to move crazy. a show today compared okay. to those days. So yeah. you guys probably didn't start out here in the desert. Where's the history start from and how did it get to Las Vegas? Yes, yeah, so, uh, it started with the touring shows for a number of years. Um, they they, uh, Cirque got grants from the Canadian government because they're a, a Quebec-based company. And over time, um, you know, word started to spread of this new and different thing that we were doing, stilt walkers, no animals, no bearded ladies. And um, eventually that led to a stint in um, 
uh, an arts festival in Los Angeles that sort of put Cirque on the map and made okay. it the, you know, sort of the talk of the town. And that's, you think that's where Steve Wynn first heard about him? No, not yet. It oh, was, okay. yeah, that was, well, that was the beginning of it. And then the tours began, the, the, the sort of, um, the tent tours began. And so once we broke from Montreal, and this is all before my time, so, yeah. He wanted to come to Vegas, only place in the country with hookers. Well, Steve, you know, there you go. Steve Wynn and our founder, Guy, had a lot in common. And I mean, there's so many stories that I hear about Guy had a friend that, and next thing you know, we were here. So the first thing we did was we brought a tent show to Vegas and tried it out and it was a hit, and Mystere opened at Treasure Island, so it's 20 okay. years. Yeah, I didn't even know that, so Mystere was the very first. Very first one, 20 years ago. And very ago. first theater show, too, right? Is that what we talked about? Is that the first time you guys did yeah. something outside of the town? Our yeah. first resident okay. show, so yeah. that, that's a perfect segue. One of the things that we try to do on this show is connect with first-time business owners, small entrepreneurs, Take me back to a time when they were creating Mysteria and what were the unknowns that they had to deal with that might resonate with some of our audience? Well, you know, think of it, this was Vegas 20 years ago, so it was before Mega Vegas and sort of the Mega Days of the Strip, and so the idea of bringing some kind of new world-class entertainment was an important idea. Bringing a show that ultimately didn't have language involved, so that really transcended, oh, yeah, yeah, no. you know, it transcended, it's just yeah, like what I was doing earlier. Yeah, that, yeah all that emotion stuff. comes through body language? Yeah, I mean, it's body it's language, it's the music, it's the emotion of it, and even when there is language, it's our own sort of circus language, it doesn't correspond to anything. So is that what it's it, like in your office, too? Like, exactly is that, like right. in the front office? If I answer the like, phone, if I answer the phone, it's like, a, just pick it up, oh, idiot. Yeah, you I know, just, a round <laughs> off, and then, you know, you pick up the phone. Right, you dance yeah, around exactly. the phone, and then the ultimate person Always. can actually answer Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's your ticket? No doubt. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a, you know, is that, is that like your culture? You know, a lot of times we talk about culture. It's a big thing, Zappos. A lot of the companies downtown are good at. What is the culture like? Is it? Feel? You know what, it's the most eclectic group of people I've ever worked with. I've been at Cirque for six months okay. now, and you know, coming from entertainment, some of the things you mentioned before, you know, I was at Paramount at HBO, worked with brands like Star Trek, and in, in a room and in introductions, a lot of times that was interesting, you know, people would stop and go, that's an interesting life you've had. I got nothing around yeah. the table at Cirque, well, nothing at all. With, you're working with like 12 year olds sometimes, right? It's 12 year olds, 85 year olds, um, and in the back office where I work with, you know, sales and marketing, the business side of it, seriously, former performers, magicians, yeah. um, you know, well, one of my heads of marketing is, my, my head of marketing is uh, a former world wrestling <laughs> wrestler. So, I mean, I got nothing. You know, yeah. we go around the table to introduce that. ourselves. People so, have traveled the world. They've been on tour. They've been in the tents. And so I am the least interesting character. So in we talked a little bit about um, what the bottom level of Cirque can do for the top level. Like, if it's not a top-down organization, mm -hmm. um, what, what is happening and how are people getting ideas from the bottom up? Yeah, I mean, it's a very flat organization because one of our performers on our show, Love at the Mirage, uh, raised her hand. She happens, she's 20. My story too, she, yeah. Exactly, right? She's 23 years old. She's already looking to the end of her dance career because she's the the you know the right. wiz, the only have so much she's time. only yeah. twenty she's twenty three and looking forward to twenty eight and having to retire. But she's a business major and so she knocked on our door one day in marketing and said, "I've got an idea." I, she grew up in Las Vegas. She's a native. Um, she said there are seventy five dance studios here in Las Vegas, which kind of blew my mind that there were that right. many individual studios. She yeah. grew up in one of them. She said, we could do master classes. There are kids that would love to come on stage at the Mirage, come on stage at Mandalay yeah. Bay, learn from our choreographers. Oh, yeah. And so, so that could be a new revenue source? For absolutely. The company, a new revenue source, way. a yeah. new way to touch, touch the community, a new way for kids to, to sort of get acquainted with what we do. And so it went from zero to 60. That was an idea that came across their desk in yeah. July, August awesome. last summer, and we're ready to launch our first workshop in another couple of weeks. Okay, so, but we, one of the most interesting things was you said that Cirque had struggled internally to pull the curtain back mm -hmm. and sort of let the younger generation of social media, mm -hmm. I guess, show some of the stuff that you traditionally wanted to. Could you just walk through that and maybe lessons people here could learn? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, one of the things that Cirque really prides itself on is how exquisite the shows are. Every element of the show, from the music to the makeup to the costumes, the performances, it's all exquisite. It's lockstep. It's a perfect spectacular. You're hitting every mark. Um, I think early in the early days, uh, especially with the with the web and with new media, it was a little bit scary to let people in to see what happens as the sausage is being made. You know, they're used right, to yeah. having you perfectly in the audience. The let us, yeah. let us, you know, do, you know the thing, right? You know, like I don't want yeah. you to see how I yeah. get to the thing, right? But I, what's interesting is, you know, we. We've got performers as young as 13 years old, so they're native to the technology, and so it's been. Right, they're just live streaming every it, breakfast. It's and pretty much, and so you know the, they've yeah. helped to push the company along to understand that this is something that I want to do to share what I talk about. I have people yeah. all the time who ask me, you 
know, so what does a contortionist do when she wakes up in the morning? And, and you, you stick your you're head in over sweat your head and, and make an omelet, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, in, in your sweatpants. What's a contortionist do? <laughs> Pants ripped. Just, that's well, you know. Right, I can't do it. <laughs> but, right. but you know, but letting but letting yeah. people see that you know it's already started organically, and so you know what we're here to do is just amplify that and let the stories be told because yeah. the behind the scenes really is interesting. We got fascinating. It is people. an absolutely fascinating story, and I appreciate you taking some time to yeah, talk absolutely. to us. Everybody, check out CirqueDuSoleil.com. CirqueDuSoleil.com right. and Always. clown noses. Did everybody get? Yeah, did you? Clown noses. I had it on for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Look at him put him on. Nice. See, look, none nice. of them. They kept it in their pockets, and then when yeah. They're yeah, like, they're being all down low about it. Yeah, That's they all okay. want to take it home to their family. And but. also. So I, I brought with me the little black cards that you got are our in, insider friends and family cards. So I invite anyone here to come see a show if you haven't been down to the strip. Come and see what we're about and just present the card at any box office and nice. come on Get down. It up. Get just it for up. the downtown Thank you so podcast. Much for bringing that absolutely. To us. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>